Welcome to Amateur Redneck Workshop. I'm Harold and uh, today is sort of a short two subject video and uh, one of the subjects is my round column mill. In a previous video I tried to align the head after lifting it up or down using a laser and that didn't work out right. It's just, you know, I was still several thousands off. And I know that there's other people who've built elaborate plate and bar systems and such to try to hold the thing in alignment as it goes up and down. And I'm, I don't really know how successful those are, but I don't really want to go that route. And I've thought about it that probably some sort of electronic device that would measure how far I moved from a starting spot so that I can just move it back into the measuring device says you're back where you were you know uh, I thought about that I thought what a rotary encoder with a big rubber wheel on it you know say if I'm gonna move the thing I pop the wheel down to touch the column loosen the bolts crank it up get a reading from the rotary encoder to go back to zero where you started and then you know tighten everything down I thought well that sounds like it's possible I don't have a rotary encoder, probably one of you guys may have a whole drawer full of them. And, you know, I could, I could build all that, I mean, I, I know how to hook it up to an Arduino and stuff. But I was thinking, one of you guys out there well, might have a lot of better ideas on how to, how to measure the movement. That's all we need to do, measure the movement. We don't have to restrict it, just measure it so we can go back to where we started. And. So I'm asking you guys, think about it, put something together in your garage and give it a try. You know, don't just give me your idea because I'm not going to be able to go anywhere with your idea. I don't have the inspiration that caused you to have it, you know. And uh, so think on it. I know there's a lot of really smart guys out there. Some of you have got round column mills and some of you are going to think of just exactly the right way to measure where I was and go back there without, you know having to recenter and all this kind of junk. Alright? Now the second thing that happened was I got a, a mail box, a, a package in the mail. This came from Bruno Martini. And he's got a 3D printer like a, a lot of the, the young guys that are eager to get on with modern technology. And he's printed uh, some pieces for me. He printed some uh, uh, tool holders. I'll show you those in a minute. And uh, he also printed some uh, bushings that are like this. This is the bushing that came with the, with the lathe, one of them. And here's a bushing that uh, I bought from Sears. And here's a bushing that uh, Bruno printed. And uh, Bruno's one of my viewers and I'm one of his viewers. So he's got a channel called Bruno M. And uh, there's, there's, you'll have to go through Bruno Mars probably while you're looking for Bruno M, which is the, the name of his channel. And he's got, a, he's putting together a shop there, and you know, lathe and service grinder and things like that. And I think that uh, he had welcomed a few viewers. He's, uh, you know, he's got good ideas and he's working on interesting things. All right, so. I'll rearrange stuff here and we'll do the tool holders bit. I'll show you them. And uh, before I get there though, I want to uh, I want to tell you about this past Sunday that was 22 Fun Sunday. And every fifth Sunday, you know, every month that has a fifth Sunday, on that fifth Sunday we have a little shooting match for 22 rifles and 22 pistols only. And uh, what it is, it's a, a match where we've got two plate racks and you shoot at one plate rack and the other guy shoots at his plate rack and in between them they've got a thing called a pepper popper. Let me lay this stuff down. And when you've knocked down all the targets on your rack, then you shoot the, the pepper popper that's on your side and they will fall. And if the other guy shoots his, his will fall over. You know, they, they overlap when they're down. And the one on the bottom was of course the first which, you know, that kind of makes sense, huh? So, anyway, 
you'd start off with the rifles at 50 yards and then you move up to about uh, 15 or 20 yards, I think maybe 15 yards, I'm not sure, with pistols. And then after that's all over, you have a stump shoot where you shoot off two by twos. And you divide everybody up into an even number of teams and the last team to, to shoot the end off of their two by two is disqualified and then the remaining guys move down the two by two to another black mark and shoot that end off. And finally there's one guy left that's the winner, or one team that's the winner. We, we did all that this Sunday and it's it lived up to its name. It was really fun. So 22 Fun Sunday was as advertised. There was a, a, a good crowd there and we had about half young guys in the 25 to 30 range or 20 to 30 range and we had about half old guys in the 50 to 70 range you know and a few in between possibly but everybody showed up it was a good shot except maybe for me and uh, so all the all the contests were really close but we had a good time. All right, now then let's move on to the tool holders and uh, the, this we're not going to have a whole lot of video because my next step here is I got to make a couple of gears and I'm not going to make any more gear making videos unless there's something really unique about <laughs> some gear. All right, so let's, let's go on ahead to the tool holders. All right, those are tools that I don't use, you know, very often. So what I'm going to do is I want to take that magnetic rack off and move it down to the other end and then I can uh, put these uh, tool holders on that door there. That would be around behind the lathe or I can reach them or even easier than that here's the space between the, the doors unused, wasted I'll put the little boogers right there. I'll be back. Uh, just squint your eyes exactly right and you'll think those are all lined up exactly level and straight. Uh, you know, an old redneck holding on to two things at one time and trying to think. That's a hard job when you do that and try to get things straightened out. But that puts up all the, all the tools I've got with one left over to be on the lathe so uh, it came out just right and in fact my, my chip pan looks completely barren now I mean look at that it's it's practically empty down there now so I guess that came out alright uh, I really appreciate the tool holders there Bruno they uh, they're working out just right now then let's uh, move on to another little subject let me rearrange the camera now among the stuff that uh, Bruno sent me in the bag were in the package for several bags of test pieces that were to duplicate this little guy here. Got a bag that's different amounts of infill and different sizes if I want to try to use them for casting patterns and uh, we're still sort of in the adjusting phase of this and once we've got all the sizes and stuff worked out we'll see what happens there I think I don't know how strong this is but one of the ideas of the thing is that this will link two gears together to make a compound gear now hold on let me get a gear and let's see what it would look like all right supposing we wanted a compound gear this one I forget how many teeth this is I think it's like 20 something but you can link them together like that and now you've got a compound gear and that neat uh, I don't know I say whether this is a fiber material or metal it could be aluminum and anodized or something like that I don't know but this is where Bruno's going he's working on making these guys with this 3D printer and I'm working on making gears now there's a yet another little bushing that goes inside here and on a stud and Sears doesn't have those anymore and I'm going to have to make them so I'm a, quite a ways down yet from actually you know getting really set up to, 
to cut the metric threads but having two of the gears already it's, that's a good start and I'm today I'm going to cut another gear I'm not going to do it on video or anything but I'll cut another gear today and that will advance our cause just a little bit further when I made this one I put this little boss around it here that makes it too wide <laughs> so I'm going to machine that off uh, but other than that it's a great gear and we're going to work with it All right. and I forgot to mention this past week one of my viewers young fellow named Jorian came by and uh, we traded aluminum and now I've got a great big piece that uh, should cover two or three gears so I'm not showing it on the video of course but I'm going to remove everything off of that piece of metal that doesn't look like a gear one other thing I forgot to mention is this was a quick connect fitting on the end of my air hose and you can see how thin the edge of that is that's what was that's what was hooked on to here and uh, I had my impact tool plugged into it and I was sitting almost on the floor I was sitting on a little ammo box about about eight or nine inches tall and I dropped the wrench on the floor and this whole thing just busted off the end of it and you say oh boy I bet that an air hose is whipping around well no the dang air system I got set up here can't even hardly run an impact tool there wasn't that much flow through this stupid little hose really wasn't enough airflow through there to make it whip around on the floor so I just sort of held on to it you know and let it bleed off until the air was gone people are always saying I'm unfairly targeting harbor freight and cheap Chinese junk but that, that's what it is and that's what happened that much of the, the year that I was cutting today was lost to Mr. Bozo because he made me cut the uh, borehole in it too too big <coughs> excuse me so and he made me stick my thumb on a hot gear that bozo is a mean one you know I was talking to uh, I sent an email to uh, Mr. Bruno Martini and uh, he I, I was talking about and asking him if he had a uh, uh, video conferencing software package or something so we could talk about the 3D printing if we needed to and uh, you know it's easier to point and say see this and that and this thing over here you know but anyway as soon as I sent the, the email and I sent it with my Yahoo account right there on the top that was an ad for go to meeting they're reading your emails before you even send the sucker you know it's amazing well that's all folks uh, you all try to subscribe if you're not already a subscriber leave a comment if you got something to say and above all remember keep on keeping on bye now